All right. Happy Monday to you. Let me slam over to this one. There we go. Hope everybody is doing well. And let me, on my end, pause that. And yeah, hope you all had a great weekend as I kind of get this sorted so I can see chat. Uh, as you can see, I kind of did a little bit of a mock up on the C9. We'll get to that in a minute. I thought at first we would kind of go over again anything that I picked up. It's been a few days. And I did get some more stuff in. Simpson, hello. How are you? Let me change my chat setting on that one. I want to see everything. There we go. And I did make a little progress over the weekend. Uh, I forgot, you know, for those people that celebrate Easter, this was Easter weekend. So we didn't, um, we did get together. So I was kind of doing just little bits and pieces. It was just nothing I could stream. Uh, let's see. We're, I'm going to pause this. You guys can't see it, but I'm going to pause this guy. We'll go over what exactly I did with the car in just a minute. But first, first, we've got some kit additions. Also, I don't know if it'd be cool or not. If you were working on something or whatever, if you wanted to send that to me, we could do like a, a little feature of people working on things. I don't know how overwhelming or not that would get, but I do like seeing other things again. I do like hearing about what other people are working on. And also I've been getting uh, a lot of very nice comments or messages. And today I got one that, I don't know why I didn't think of it, but uh, we were talking about the other day, the rubber parts of the alligator clips and how it kind of left a mark. And somebody said, use masking tape. So thanks for that. I don't know why I didn't think of that, but using masking tape would be great because you still get the bite, but it's not, it shouldn't at least leave a mark. So uh, that's the stuff I love about building models. You're always learning something. You're, uh, if you're receptive to it, at least, you're always learning something. So first up, I saw what happened last time, by the way. Brandon was cheating, and probably the rest of you were too. You could see that. Clear code of the GT yesterday. It's in Discord. Sweet. Hey, when you get to a point, I can, always, uh, I can always show that if you want. All right, so first up in the edition here is got to get it kind of above where we're at uh, right there is a Honda S 800 pick this one off of eBay for what I would consider a fairly reasonable price uh, I don't like I said eBay I I know shipping is a thing but I still won't pay more than what I think is the the kit would be sitting on a shelf and oftentimes uh, you're getting a little bit better deal. This is still sealed inside. Love the box art on this guy. Get it out of the reflection and glare there. In fact, let me move this guy. Just a little. Or a little less. Yeah, so that's the part, Timson, that I really like about this is you can imagine the car the way you want it. Like, I'm not a big chrome person, just never have been. So what I might do is on these lines right here, kind of get it in close. And some of the, the grill, I might do that a different color, maybe like a gray or a black, and then put some different wheels on this. I would like to build these kits if they're like street going cars, not race cars. But street going cars, I'd like to build them the way I'd like to drive them. You know, if I was lucky enough to own an S800, it, I would like to make it the way that I would drive it on the road. So, yeah, I agree. Some some like 15s or 16s on this 
I typically go one. So this goes back to video game logic in my brain. When I play like Forza or Gran Turismo, I only went up like one or two inches on the wheel size to still kind of give it the essence of what the car was, but modernize it to maybe my tastes or just adapt it to my tastes. So, yeah, really looking forward to this one. And I think that's part of it. Why do you need so many kits? I think it's just one of those things when you're done with one, you don't know what inspiration is going to hit you next. And you're trying to get a good deal or, you know, these are physical things. They run out. So I think that's kind of the fun. And now this guy, I went to the hobby store, local hobby shop again on Saturday, stopped by and they had this thing sitting out on the shelf and I could not resist a little sunny truck. These are super cool. Has a little chin spoiler uh, on it right there. <laughs> Your loft is full of kits. That's the hard part. I I have been collecting kits for a while because, again, I had a hobby store and I was collecting some kits before that. But. You know, I. I have I'm not going to say a closet full, but it's a lot and it's stupid and I know that, but it doesn't matter because <laughs> I like it. So, yeah. So this guy right here, the sunny truck. Super cool. I can't wait again. It already comes with like these I call them mini light esque. Style wheels, which I really like, I, I actually like the way this I would drive this the way it sits. Actually, I don't think there's much I would do to this. And I I think I'm sorry, I'm getting in front of the mic and probably blocks the sound, but that's kind of the cool part. I think I would drive this just as it is. Try to get rid of that glare on there. So, yeah. And then I picked this one up at, for a really good deal. I love the odd and awkward years of Group C, lesser known cars. Oh, the rims on the Honda. I think uh, doesn't like Aoshima or somebody sell that style of rim. You could always throw that on the uh, Honda as well. Uh, but I, I always like obscure Le Mans slash endurance cars. The ones that weren't famous and like we all know, like the 88, the Toyota 88 C, for example, in the, the CV or whatever it is. And then obviously we have the, the GTP uh, Eagle Toyota, but an 87 C. Again, this is why I really enjoy this hobby is because these are so. Different. And yeah. It might be a little bit different variation. It might be just a slightly different but similar livery. I don't care. Uh, I think the cars are just super cool. And I got this one for a really great price. Again, off of eBay. I think it shipped. It was like $32. Sealed inside. Complete. Everything looks great. So this stuff is always right up my alley. Hasegawa also makes, and I was not aware, uh, these F3000 cars, and I have a few of them now. This one is probably my favorite just because of the blue and gold in this. They're all the same chassis, I believe, so that's not that big a deal. So you're mainly just getting another car to do a different style of decals. Uh, I always like most of these, the box art, when it's the real car or box art, I love the boxes on these things, too. So pick this one up again. Good deal. Just a neat I, the the Le, I don't know how you say LeBlots. The lat livery and those gold, those gold wheels on there look really good. And last one. Uh, another Hasegawa kit. Got a great deal on it as well. This one's the 642, and I like, I liked the induction, the little, I don't want to call them, I guess, air, air scoops. But that rounded, the, this version is the rounded one. It doesn't have the higher, I think there's a different version of the 642. And again, good price. Everything's great inside, sealed inside. So 
another F1 car to add to my growing list of kits. But yeah, these kits are neat. It'll be interesting if I build, not if, but when I build another Hasegawa, if I run across similar things that I've run into in this kit. So let me move this back over here. Um, and then we'll switch to this because now I can go to here and we'll go over uh, my dad. Well, number one, I got a few things from the hobby store store. I got myself a, a pin vice. This way, Billy, there we go. And we'll change the autofocus on this guy. So I got myself a pin vice. For drilling some stuff. Also got some of the polishing. I got to remember it's this way. The polishing sponges. Try to get the glare off of those packages. There we go. So grab that. Uh, and then my, my dad came over yesterday and dropped off a, <laughs> thanks by the way, uh, dropped off a care, a YouTube care package as he calls it. They watch. And so he dropped off some stuff that he thought I might need. So we got a little 240 grit sponge from Tamiya here. And then a plethora of the, which I did not have yet, of the little sanding sticks. And he marked the colors for me so I know which one is which. <laughs> So this is perfect. I don't have any of these yet. I remember back in the day he would cut these things so that he could get into places. And now you don't have to do that. It, it's funny being out of the hobby for a while and then all of the stuff that's now available that we were like, man, I wish this was this was a thing and I wish that was a thing. And now they are things. Uh, and then we just got he gave me some of these little these little sanding, I don't know, sticks. Something like that. And then last but not least, we got some brushes to try. So we might have to break one of those out today. And then these little guys that kind of Soak up some excess or or whatnot. So good stuff. I'm gonna raise it just a little here. And that's what we got for new stuff to add to the, as people are calling it, I'm learning in the space, the stash. Get all that out of the way. All right, let's go over. Let's go over this. There we go. Focus, focus. Get you out of the way. Okay, this is just sitting on here. I'm just mocking it up to see where any problems are going to happen. This, it doesn't fit too bad. I can see on the front side here. It's not sitting all the way down. I may have to do a little sanding on the backside because the I'll show you in a second when I take the body off, the nose drops in to these slots on the front. And it has a tendency to sit too low in the back. So we're absolutely going to have to glue these things on. And what else? So we've got that just kind of sitting on there. And then I just mocked up the wheels. These are just sitting on there. There's only one that fits really solid. And that's this one. The rest of them are fairly loose. Which is, again, something I wanted to know so that when I go to put this thing together. I'm going to have to glue these on and they're going to have to be in the right position because I don't want them to look all it's nothing is worse than putting a kit together and then the camber or the toe is wrong. It just looks goofy. So I may have to put like a little bit of tape 
in there because all that's happening here, let's pull the body off. You kind of have to spread, oh, runaway tire. Have to kind of spread the body a little bit. And these just go on. There's your collar for that guy. And then there's a rubber piece. Let's go ahead and take these off. There's a little rubber piece that fits over the axle shaft in these, and then that's it slides over. But they're they're pretty loose. Like there's focus. There's quite a bit of play in that thing. So I'm gonna have to figure out a way to tighten that up and then glue these on as well. Because I don't want it to, when I glue it, if it's got a little bit of play in it, I don't want it to sit too low. But the body looks like it's going to sit on as far as stance-wise correctly. I've just got to figure out a way to get everything to sit how I want it. So the wheels, in fact, I'll show you the wheels are almost done. I put a little dot there for the valve stem. We're going to go over this with the panel liner, kind of darken everything up. And I did put these will stay on the car for now. I did not, even though it tells you in the instructions to put that stuff on and the tires and wheels on right now, it's not going to happen. Oh, by the way, a uh, little trick from my dad. Well, number one, uh, I put flat, clear, focus, hi there. You gonna do it? There we go. Put flat, clear over the tire decal to seal it up, but also to kind of give it a more raced look. And then, let's see if this works, if you guys will be able to see this. There, we'll get real close. So you saw how I sanded the tires before. And this, if I can get the right lighting maybe, looks like an actual run-in tire. Now what I did was after I had done the clear, there's obviously a little bleed over. I took 400 grit and just lightly went over the tire again. Remember we already sanded the tire down to give it a more run-in look. And then we took, or I took, oh, uh, if I can find it, uh, da -da, a rubber black. I have no idea where I put it now. How does paint walk away? There it is, because it has a slightly blue tinge to it. This rubber black there we go is great for making the tires look like they're run in I brushed it over the top and it gives it a very cool authentic look i really like the way it turned out my dad turned me on to that use matte varnish on my c9 tires and then Sit on the load. So that's the next, that is the next part of this as well. I've got the soot weather master. That's going to be my next try. Again, I've not done any of this stuff before. So my next step or pretty much when the tires are getting going to be ready to get glued on or maybe after they get glued on, we're going to use a little bit of soot to darken, especially the outer edge of the tire and mainly the decal on the tire. Give it a little bit more of a run-in run -in look. So yeah, perfect. Matte varnish. Is that the Vallejo stuff? <clears throat> but I like the way the, the matte or the flat clear worked on this as well. It is, okay. We were, I was actually at the, the hobby store with my brother and we were talking about maybe the matte varnish would be a good idea. So I'll try that next time. 
I'll I'll grab a bottle of that and see what that looks like. Again, always learning stuff, which I really enjoy. And then we'll put the we'll put the soot on there. All right. Uh, next up, I had we we had done the masking. I had shot everything for this and then I went to glue stuff in and this is where uh, if you get discouraged easily this is probably not the right kit to begin with so first off I oh can you see it I've got to remember it's going to be right about here I opened up the holes with my pin vise never done anything like that before wanted to try it wanted to see how it worked worked great uh, the only thing I was not very smart about was I drilled all the way through thinking it was going to look super cool. And you can see. <laughs> there the bottom is open. And so I may after we paint it and get everything all together, I may have to slide something in there and glue it and then paint that. To. Not let so much light through. Because right now, I'm imagining that when everything goes together, because it's on the silver, it's going to really come through. Uh, and you're going to be like, why can I see silver through that? So uh, learn for next time. Then trying to slide these guys in. There's two guides and these pieces slide in. And uh, that was an experience. I don't know. I don't feel like I sanded too much off the bottom ledge of these, but there is a spot. Let me point to it with. We'll use my tweezers. There is a spot or these circular pieces that are molded in to this guy and just cleaning it up before I sprayed. I sanded the bottom because I knew or after because I knew it was going to glue in. Well, when you slide this in, it doesn't want to clear these two guides that are on either side. So I had to start sanding away. Now, one side fit way better than the other one. So I don't know. I'm not sure. It's not a paint thing because I don't spray real heavy coats and I cleaned all that out. A weathered 206 in Discord. Nice. Yeah, if you want me to show it like tomorrow or the next time I stream, I'll do it because I like this stuff. I like looking. Um, so anyway, this this one was just a nightmare and I ended up snapping this guy off this little whatever that is tube off. I did pretty good at not cussing. I might have said it in my head. So then I had to try to glue this back on without the guide pin or anything, which was an experience. Again, I think old me would have been like, that's it. I don't want to do this anymore. But that's not the point. The point is to learn still. And so I'm going to finish, even though like it's not square, it kind of drives me bananas. <laughs> but I did the best I could at getting that back to where it was. Uh, even this side, not snapping it off, is still not as square as I'd like it with the top part. So, this side was easier to do. I did sand it a little, and then this one just slid right in. This one, however, did not want to slide right in. I really struggled with that side. <clears throat> and then, I glued a radiator and box in. And then these two pieces in the tow hook, that's all glued together. Uh, but you can see how this one is not square. And that is a result of how you put the box together for the radiator. And it just doesn't, it didn't square up and I didn't catch it. The, yeah, it's the wastegate. I can never remember the name. I, <laughs> you're correct. It is the wastegate. I'm all part of the turbocharger, but it, that sounds goofy because then it sounds like, I don't know. To sound like I didn't know what I was talking about and I just couldn't think of the name. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, the wastegates just aren't how I want them. So anyway, this guy is a result of being askew because this 
is not lined up. And I glued this in, not realizing that these were the tolerances were going to be so tight here and here. So it is what it is. It's in there at an angle. I'm not tearing it apart. In fact, you probably will never even see this or notice it once the body is on and we have the nose piece covering it. So. Eh. <laughs> I learned a lesson. I should actually put this on my block here. So next time, if I build another one of these cars, I will be sure to make to know that this guy, everything just has to be perfectly square here. Uh, and even though we covered it up a little bit with a little bit of silver paint on the top, it just didn't do what I thought it should do. And then when I was gluing this, this guy fell down, of course, because I was a dummy and let go too soon. So we have some touch up spots to go through. And uh, that's OK. I didn't like how the bottom was turning out because it was just a lot was happening with the bottom and it was scuffing and scraping, even though I was being very careful. So I went with the semi gloss on the bottom. Uh, it's hard to tell. You might be able to see it. Uh, I did not. I have my spray booth in the laundry room and I did not tell my daughter not to run the dryer while the paint booth was on. I was letting it gas off and I walk in there and the dryer's on. I was like, I don't remember the dryer being on. Uh, and if you know anything about dryers, it blows stuff everywhere. Even though it's got a vent hook and a hose hook to it, it still blows stuff everywhere. And so there's little dust particles all over. And I've been pretty diligent about cleaning the, the booth and making sure there's no dust in the area. Like, And it's worked well for everything else. I haven't gotten dust in any of my other paint. That, however, I did not let my daughter know that please don't turn on the dryer until I pull this out of the paint booth. So there's some dust in it. Again, not a big deal. You're not going to see the bottom of this because there's no detail to this. It's going to be like this. I, again, I was just trying things. I wanted to see what the semi gloss looked like because I was really unhappy with how the flat looked on the bottom of the car. But yeah, so we've got I've got some spots to touch up there, up in the front here, um, and I'll figure out how to do that. All of this from last time, remember, we we did the panel liner to darken it up. We also did it on the brake disc. I'm really happy with the brake discs, how those have turned out. I think those have turned out great. Uh, we're going to do some of that stuff up here. I like how the panel liner just darkens everything up, gives it a little bit more of a used look. Uh, so I think our next step while we're on stream, and again, I'm kind of figuring this out, you know, 90 minutes to maybe two hours. Thank you. I'm real out of everything. I'm happy with that the most, the brake disc <laughs> and the wheels turned out good as well. So we're going to uh, like, I'm really happy with the tire and wheel combination. Like I, I like how that worked. Uh, maybe that matte varnish would give it a little bit more of a sheen because I notice on the, oh, sorry. I noticed on the tires that were on my example, uh, my reference photos there, they have a little bit of a sheen to them. So maybe that matte varnish that you suggested will will have a little bit better color or more of a sheen. But I do like the way the flat looks because it looks like they were really run, uh, run hard. So next time we'll try that. Uh, I think here. We're going to go ahead and do the burnt iron on this. Possibly need to touch up a couple of the silver parts right here. So I've just uh, we'll start here and then I might move to here. We'll darken up this the nut with the, the conical part on the wheel with the panel liner. Just give it a little bit more. It just takes like that brightness out, gives a little bit more run in look I'm finding. Uh, also, while I was test fitting this, I noticed that the chassis has a slight bend. It's not as flat as I would have hoped it to be. Not a big deal, 
it seems to still fit. I'm just going to have to be careful and we're going to have to glue this body on and make sure it's nice and square. Um, so after all of this, I've got, uh, let me show you. I've got, I just painted the interior also. I masked that off. And I ran out of paint right at the very end. So there might be a few little touch-up spots once this dries. Let me kind of back that up for you a little bit. Uh, but I taped off this guy, all of this, this. So we will peel this off. Maybe at the end, it'll be ready to peel. And we'll see how good or bad of a tape job I did. And again, we'll we'll darken that thing as well. All right, so let's get our that's our gun metal. Where's our dark iron? Here's our dark iron. We're gonna do dark iron and touch up the inside here. Don't need to thin this because it's. It won't be necessary. Get ourselves a paper towel. And probably use this one. Go ahead and I'll move this for me so I don't drop something on it. That'll be good. And get our paint stir. Just let her go. And get everything off the sides and the bottom. Looks pretty good. If I was smart. I would have opened up my isopropyl alcohol to begin with. And then I made it so tight. There we go. One handed. And then we'll just run this over here. And over we go. and clean there we go all right she's dripping a little take care of that get my good towel in my lap and let's just go ahead and finish this up i was thinking by the way, of maybe doing like weekly or when I can, like no more than weekly, is to maybe do like kind of a recap. It's almost like a weekly recap of what's happened in the past week for people that don't like to watch live streams or the VODs later. Try to make those as short as I can you know, 15-ish minutes or so. And just kind of explain what I went through, the problems I ran into, any solutions or anything that I came across. Because again, I am learning as I go. There we go. That's all cleaned up. Go ahead and touch this up. Just giving people a, a different option to watch if they choose not. Or maybe they can't catch a live stream, but they don't like watching the VODs. And I can just talk about my experience with the kit so far. Like, what's gone well, what I've learned, what hasn't worked. Uh, 
because we've run into several things <laughs> that I've just, yes, I did recover. <laughs> my dad thought, my parents thought that was very funny that I dropped my brush into things. Yes, so I had to take the, the bottle. <laughs> That's so stupid. I had to take my isopropyl uh, alcohol bottle and go over the sink and then tip it over on its side because I couldn't get in to get it to a point where I could grab it with tweezers because it always kept going to like one of the corners and it just wouldn't come back. So I had to get it on its sides and then kind of shake it so it would get back to the center. And then I went in and grabbed the brush with the tweezers and pulled it out without losing like too much. I only lost that little bit of the top there. But yeah, I was like, I can't believe I did it. And that's part of the joy of doing this live, I guess. Yeah, we had when they were over yesterday, we had a good laugh about that because it was pretty funny. And you have to laugh because, I mean, it was just being dumb on my part, not paying attention to what I was doing. Go ahead and. Finish out the inside here, and after this dries, I'm going to try running the pen liner in this as well. And see if that helps darken up, give it kind of a run look. Um, I'd like to try on the body to maybe even do a little soot behind, behind it. Again, just to give it that kind of run in look. I'm going to have to put a mark down on the mat so I can remember where center is. All right. That'll work. We'll let that dry. And close the paint up here. Again, this is just it. I know what this is. This is just going to be a curbside, but I'm just I want to try a bunch of stuff on it that I've never done before, like I've said. So then when I go to the next kit, my knowledge bank is just a little bit better and hopefully I can execute a little better. All right, we'll put I think we'll put that off to the side. Let me clip my brush in. And uh, why don't we try darkening those centers of the wheels up just a little bit and see what that looks like. I'm gonna use I'm gonna use dark gray. The really nice thing I found about this, I think I might have explained it the other day when we were doing the brake discs, is just if you do too much. You can dry the brush off, spread it back around, and it'll soak up excess. You can dry that off and keep doing that. Uh, it's just, I find it much easier to work with than maybe a, uh, let's do this. I don't know if you have to mix this stuff or not. Does it tell you? Danger, precautions, do not ingest. Okay. Don't apply into enamel. Shake well or stir with, okay, so we're gonna, it's asking us to do the paint stir, so we're gonna do that.
Any thoughts on Liberty Media buying MotoGP? Uh, well, I would say what Liberty Media has done in certain regards to popularity may help MotoGP in the same way. We can make an argument whether it's improved F1 or not. I don't know. There's some good parts. There's some not so good. Is it good having a, one company control more than one thing? Eh, I don't know. I mean, the same thing can be said about NASCAR because I think, don't they also do uh, or are in control of like the WeatherTech IMSA stuff? Am I, am I correct in that? I feel like at least at one point they had the Rolex sports car series. I'm pretty sure. And do they also have AMA? I don't remember. On one hand, having an organization like that means that they have the financial, hopefully the financial stability to improve the product. They learn more things and they have, and when something works, they try to apply it to other series. Like I desperately think IndyCar is in need of the formula that Moto or uh, that IMSA went with with their GTP class. Same thing, you know, GTP and WEC. However, I don't think IndyCar feels like that is either the direction they want to go or that is feasible for them. I feel like they're not, maybe not interested. And they don't want to get the price to go out of control. But anyway, circling back around to MotoGP, you know, I, I feel like MotoGP's got way out of control. I don't, I haven't watched MotoGP in years uh, because I feel like the bike's, are starting to look like flying wings. Oh, there you said it. Get rid of the bloody arrow would be my first. Yes, absolutely. They These need to look like the bikes you ride on the road. And uh, to my knowledge, I know that's kind of what Superbike is. Whether it's British or the AMA stuff. I just feel like they're, they can have the tech in them and make them like the Formula One of the cars. Oh. Sky, I just saw your comment. <laughs> I'm just talking to myself. Um, I would say that the arrow on the bikes makes them too dependent on it, number one. Uh, and number two, just don't feel like it looks like a motorcycle. Have some of the other tech. But I don't know. I just... When I look at that stuff, I'm not super interested in what's going on. Here we go. Now we're going to suck up some of that with the brush. I have ground effects now. Yeah. I the and I'm just not crazy about the ground effects stuff. So I just I'm going to be real. I have not watched in a while. Because of that, I just don't find it Interesting. So it's it's probably hard to notice on camera. But this one we just did and it just darkened it up just a little bit. And then I might even try black around the very edge. I haven't decided yet. You're insane. To not stop this right now. Suzuki is out. Honda and Yamaha might follow because it became wild to develop. Yeah, well, it, it, it's expensive. But it's expensive because you've lost the audience, I think, that you're trying to appeal to.
So there is not the level of engagement. They think they're looking for. I'm all for finding new ways and pushing the mode, you know, the sport further. But I would really like it to still look like a motorcycle. And I just feel like you're starting to put these ground effects, these aerodynamic winglets and all this stuff. And it's impressive, but eh. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. That's really looking good. Thank you, sir. And that Rossi's team might be taking Yamaha next season. Interesting. Again, I have not followed MotoGP in a while just because the bikes just don't really interest me all that much. And I could be in the minority. I'm fully aware. Um... I thought they had some really cool looking stuff up until they just kind of went out of control with the arrow. And then you hear the writers talk about it. And now, I don't know. I don't know if there's they should be introducing ABS and traction control. I mean, does that really make the racing better? Does that make the product better? I'm not sure that it does. Soak up some of this excess here. Just trying to darken that up just a little. I'm going to have to give myself like a square to be within so you guys can see. <laughs> And it could be recency bias, like, you know, when I was really heavy into riding motorcycles, I watched a lot of Superbike and MotoGP. Oh, man, I did not want to come back. No. We're just dragging it now. Come here. There we go. Get too much on there, just use one of those. Three hundred, yeah. I that's wild. And but when you do the three hundred, right? And then you've got to clamp it down by adding all this extra stuff to it. Are you really making the package? I didn't want to do that. You're are you really making the package that much better? I don't know. I would say no. But it's also not my boat. I think that's why, you know, we look back at Group B and Group C. Uh, Can-Am. F1, like in the V10, you know, from probably the 70s through the maybe early 2000s. Because we did let them develop a lot of tech. I don't know why. And again, that could be recency bias. I just feel like that was a little different than some of the other stuff that goes on today. Like with it's like trying you're trying to control costs. It's like NASCAR. You're trying to control costs, yet you let these guys just destroy each other at Daytona and Talladega. And then wonder Macos. I mean, they've clamped down on the motor horsepower in NASCAR. Really hasn't changed the racing. In fact, it might have made it worse. But they're not saving any money. It it's kind of funny. We found this out when racing sprint cars. It costs more to restrict and go slower. 
Now even the road going top Ducatis have the wings. Yeah, I I was wondering if they did. I haven't seen the ones that have the arrow stuff on there, but again, why 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 do we need that? And can't they just remove the downforce and ask it? Because they've invested all this money and they they want to have a product that is ver what they consider to be versatile. And I think it was Mark Martin, somebody else were chatting or commenting that they never really had a lot of these problems back in the day because the cars weren't sealed off to the ground. If you same thing is happening in, with dirt late models, those noses get so sealed off to the track. If you lose any of that, the car doesn't run right anymore. Same thing here. The cars have been so sealed off to the ground forever that they don't really know how to run them without that stuff. So, you, I would prefer, I mean, if you look at those cars from the, the stock car stuff, the cup cars from 90s, 80s, 90s, and 2000s, they're not sealed off to the track. Mark Martin, when he, I think when he made that post, he showed one of their cars. And I mean, the thing has a gap in under the, the nose. I mean, it's huge. There's so much air getting underneath the car. So. Did I watch the hunter? Oh, no, I. That annoyed me as well. That whole IndyCar challenge thing. I knew the track was not going to work because those tracks are not designed for that type of racing. They're club circuits for guys that have a lot of money that can just take their sports car or their track day vehicle or whatever. Uh, little club club race cars and go out and run. I mean, it, this would be like running IndyCar at where I ran my stuff up at uh, Thunder Hill. Like that track really isn't meant for, e I'd say even nowadays GT3 cars. It's a great track, but it's really great for junior level open wheel cars and like Miatas, and like we ran our go-karts on that track, the 125 shifters, and it was awesome. We had drafting battles, but you had to lift in the cart. You could float through the corners like you were playing with the throttle. It's perfect. Great for those cars. Same thing with that track, though. That What was the name of that club? I just don't understand. I don't... What was the purpose? Why were you... What is the appeal? Oh, thermal club. That's what it was. What is the appeal to the thermal club and racing a car, uh, an Indy car at the thermal club? As a fan of Indy car, what's the point? There is none. There just isn't. I don't think any Indy car fan wanted a race, a non points race, at the thermal club. I think everybody else would have been way more happy with an actual points race at a good facility, either an oval or a good structured, you know, uh, a permanent road course that wasn't tilkified. How about that? Um, okay, that's good. What would be my next step here? Let's take a look. These instructions are going to be probably a little... Oh, we're okay. Instructions, instructions. We've done all that. I've put the bar. i put our little deal there. Gone through this. So, yeah, we're at this point. I can paint... I can paint the knob on the shifter. Let's do that while that stuff dries. I'm going to have to figure out. I'm going to have to figure out how I want to attack this because there's <clears throat> when I resprayed the bottom, I did. I used uh, cellophane tape and cellophane and the tape. With the cellophane made an imprint in this part and this part over here again, learning. So I need to figure out how to fix that. And there's a little overspray here and there that'll touch up. 
little overspray on the front. I'll touch up there. And then that'll be good to go. So I'll probably just use that uh, retarder and put a lot, a lot with it to smooth it out and go over that. Yes, in the set of Corsa, I actually did look at some video games and then I looked at uh, there's a site. There was one site that had a really great reference photos inside the engine bay, even though this doesn't have an engine, but inside the cockpit and everything else. It looks super neat. Uh, that's where my debate actually with myself for the interior see if I can there we go these little oval where the I'm assuming that's where the fuel cell is and they put like a little enclosure some cars have this they say to have this blue in the instructions this part and that part I use my tweezers here so I'm not covering things this part and this part again it's covered by tape right now but I wonder I've also seen them uh, a Kevlar style cover, and I have this. Where is it at? Yellow. It's like a dark yellow. I have this dark yellow coat color, and when it goes over black, it almost has like a Kevlar look to it. So I'm wondering if that's maybe the direction I'll go if it pops a little bit more. I'm not sold on the blue. I don't know yet. But that's what the instruction call for is the blue. Let's grab the shifter out of our parts. Our parts box here. There it is, if I can grab it. Come here. There we go. Let's just leave it like this. And again, we talked about last, last time using that ELO stuff to strip with a paintbrush. It just works. It works great. Uh, in fact, let's try the little. Let's do, let's do what was suggested. Let's do the masking tape over this. Dogs are going bananas because something's probably getting delivered. And I was spraying, spraying that interior and I ran out of, of course I did. I ran out of paint. I was like, ah, you know what? I'm not going to use this. That's too thick. Too thick. Just so it doesn't mark up everything quite so bad. There we go. There's one. Scissors? Where'd I put my scissors? I had them. There they are. Did not have enough though. Put a little bit more on.
I'll use this base because I've got it handy. And let's grab, we'll grab our white. I haven't even opened this one yet. I think the hardest part about this is going to be the body. Like trying to do the things that I want to do, get rid of the mold lines on the body. There's actually a panel here that one of these joints, I think it's the top side, not putting it in frame. One of the these joints is not supposed to be there. You know what? I keep doing that. Let's move. Let's move you this way. Because I keep going out of frame. This way I can work. There we go. That's a little better. How long do you have to build the car before the race starts? You know, the team needs to. Yes. Uh, probably not fast enough, GM. I don't think I can build them fast enough. Clean that off. We'll go with this, but first let's mix our, get that out of the way. Let's mix our paint. Look at the color change. Funny thing is, they didn't have this in the small bottles. I like the 10 milliliter bottles. This thing's going to dry up before I use it all. I need to build the track too, yes. That would be cool. I like the diorama idea. Yeah, I just, we're on the same wavelength, Star Fox. I don't know, I kinda, so I, you know, I've talked about it before, but I built slot car tracks that looked like race tracks. Like the lanes weren't really colored. The, it looked like a road. Um, That might be something I try down the road. I'm saying road too much. I'm not a huge scenery person. I don't really care for doing the scenery, but I love making the actual track part of it, making it look like a run in track. Like that was always fun when I built the wood routed wood slot car tracks for myself and other people. Just making it look like an actual racetrack instead of just like a kind of goofy, kind of a goofy slot car track. Like the whole purpose of the 132nd scale stuff like Carrera, slot it, scale electrics, um, NSR was that you were racing stuff that looked real. And I wanted, when I did the tracks, I wanted them to look real. I didn't want to, they weren't flat. I had banking off camber, uphill, downhill. Like that's where all the character in the track was. It feels like <laughs> I'm, yes, I'm practicing my dentistry. You should be so impressed. Need work done? I have a drill. It may not be turn out like you want it, but we can do it. And that to the other side there.
probably could have thin this out a little bit, but I think we're okay. British you can't teeth can't be made worse. <laughs> oh no. Just glue the car to my gums. Would be exciting. Hey, at least you have some sort of fashion statement when you smiled. And Star Fox the same thing. Jeez. That's not good. You know, all the stereotypes come true. Be a little bit more right there. See if I can do this without completely making it. There we go. So this part is gunmetal gray, and then I put a little titanium silver for the collar. That supposed to have like a bushing or something. I would imagine that's in there, and then that's white for the shifter. It's a happy little shifter. Should I? I can't even do a Bob Ross impression. <laughs> Have a Recaro bucket seat as a canine tooth implant, more stylish than <laughs> gold tooth. You just smile and go, I'm really hardcore. Did they come out with the uh, nice golf club? Oh, yeah. It's pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> Did they come out with the Nordschleife for ACC yet? Has it, has it dropped? Is everybody and their mother streaming it, or has it not dropped yet? You know what I'm going to do? I should be better about cleaning the top of this off. Gonna clean the top of the paint. There we go. It's a nine iron. Now that you've said that, I'm gonna have to find a set of golf clubs one time. And paint them up and then set them, set them in like uh, one of the sports cars, like the. Uh... Like the little S800 that I just got. Oh, Brandon was doing OK. I was just curious. I ACC doesn't really do anything for me. Again, we're kind of at a point where I just don't have a whole lot to say about <laughs> about this stuff, you know? I feel like I'm repeating myself constantly. Okay. Throw that in there. 
this. All right, is this dry enough to pull the tape off of yet? Need a little bit of touch up, but it's the interior and I'm gonna wash it. I'm gonna make it darker anyways. Do the do the stick test. I think as long as I don't manhandle that part, I think we're okay. All right. Untaping. How how terrible of a paint job or a taping job did I do? I mean, uh, I mean, you need to fix a lot more. Just nothing break, please. Oh, that's looking pretty good. Come here. <laughs> Pull you up. Again, I sprayed that matte black down as a base. Come here. There we go. I like the way the silver stuff looks over the top. Oh, just a little, maybe just a tiny bit of touch up in the corner. But this is all going to be, this part right here at least, is going to be that olive drab. I'd have to go in the back of a dentist Jaguar. Oh, that's the one that goes in. So if we do, we end up doing a Jaguar, that's a Jaguar. That's what, uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to put golf clubs in there. We can do that. That's not that's not bad, but not as clean as I want right there. I'll have to I'll have to fix that. In fact, that probably should have been masked off on that side. I didn't even think about that. Well, I'll have to fix that. I'll probably just hit it with that ELO paint remover and then just put the uh, put flat black down and then the olive over the top of it. I didn't even think about that side. <laughs> How did I miss that? That's funny. It's funny because it's so obvious. Oh, that turned out good. That turned out real good. But I am stupid and that that totally this part right here totally should have been taped off with a flat black. Hmm. Fail. I missed it. Any overspray like here is not that big a deal. You're never going to see this part of the car.
I might do a little touch up there. I don't know if you're going to see that part or not. Might have to do a little touch up on that one. I get it off up there, possibly. Come here. any moment I feel like I should say happy little trees or something. Looks perfectly fine to me. I feel older Billy might be overcompensating the detail to make up for the crimes that young Billy committed on the old models just to... <laughs> there we go. Ooh, it's good so far. Look at that line. Oh, yeah. Oh, that that one worked out good. Yeah, I like I said, as a kid, you, you know, I just. Tried to hand paint everything and throw stuff together. David, hello. But there's just the tools now that are available, uh, all of that just make this stuff so much more easy than it used to be. And and trying to learn the different techniques and then apply those things that I've seen people do either in video or that my dad or my brother tell me. It just engages my brain differently. And I try, I just, I want to try. I want to try to figure out how to do this stuff. I'm not trying to make, I'm never going to make a contest model. That's not, I'm not saying I won't enter stuff into a contest, but it'd be more just of a participating in show. Like there's a, the Autorama is here at the beginning of May and there the local club model club has a whole area that they're displaying. And so if I can get this done, I'll take it, display it. I don't care about winning, but it's cool to participate. Talk shop. I like seeing other people's builds and I'm not trying to make, I'm not trying to make replicas. I'm not trying to make these, show-stopping, award-winning cars. There's plenty of other people that do that, and they do it very well. This is more just... This is what I want to do. Almost done. we go and here's another tape line does this work oh look at that see that should have been there like that it's just the side i should have this part right here i should have left black i should have taped over that part i can't believe i did that that's hilarious It is going to the model. I think people get kind of caught up in like trying to compete at the model shows. And, you know, there's some stuff that's cool, but it's more I've. 
I don't even know if I, I might have won something when I was a kid in like the junior category or something. But it's not really about that. It's about going, meeting people or meeting up with your buddies that build cars. There's a, there's right now, even though I just started, there's a group of us, including my dad and my brother, but there's other people that there's a group of us that are texting back and forth, showing what we're doing. And that's cool. And then we get together and we can see what each other's doing. And you learn just by looking. How'd you do that? Which way did you do this kind of thing? And that's the fun part is learning what everybody else is doing to their stuff. You know, it, even just talking with my dad and my brother, like yesterday, my dad was here and we we're talking about, oh, how should I do this? How should I do this? You know, I've never done I've never masked off a part like this before. What's the good way to do that? And then it's pretty darn impressive when you go to these model shows and see like the quality of work. Some of these people scratch build stuff that is absolutely incredible. Just blows your mind. They've obviously spent a lot of time on that. But it's super impressive. I don't want to do that. I don't have a desire to do that, but I really like it. Just same thing as I don't have a desire to build military stuff. But I think it's cool. Like, I like seeing the detail and how those guys weather stuff and everything. So it's kind of, yeah, it's like these, if you think about it, it's just, there's that model show. And then in the middle of the month, a little ways from us, there's another model show in May, in the middle of May. And just taking your stuff, going, hanging out, chatting with people and just looking at what people have done and then have people go just, hey, this is what I did. This is how I did it. That's the fun part. Tanko, oh, you have it. There's some if you really get interested, you can look up uh, the model car muse. I think is his YouTube channel and he features like the guy's an incredible builder, number one. Uh, and I call him the Bob Ross. He has he has a very Bob Ross esque style about him. And he will highlight other people's builds when he goes to these shows and some of them are just scratch building a Greenwood 75 Corvette. The crazy wide body looking one for Lamar. Uh, there's another one that's a Lola T70. And these guys are just. It's insane. It's so crazy what they can scratch build. But then there's guys that don't do any of that and they just do a nice paint job and do all the detail work. And those look incredible. And everybody's got a little bit different way of doing stuff. Well, I'm pretty happy with my paint job. I did run out of paint, though, when I was doing the silver. But that's OK. I think we're pretty good. I can just touch up whatever I missed. We're going to kind of darken the other seat is going to go here. You're not going to see any of this anyways. And then whatever is exposed, we'll probably hit it with a dark wash, kind of tone things down, especially around the rivets. Um, this again, this part and this part is the thing that I'm debating on what color I want to do. It says blue in the instructions. I've seen blue. I've also seen the kind of Kevlar color. So I'm not sure which I want to do. I'll have to keep kind of thinking about that. This is going to be painted like a olive. It's called like an olive drab. And then I'll have to put a flat over it. I'm hoping to kind of thin it enough where You'll get the color, but because of the black undercoat, it'll give it some depth as it's going along. We'll probably do maybe we'll have to look and see in reference photos. I believe that's a fire extinguisher. I'll have to look this up. See if there's any detail work we can do there. But yeah, this turned out really well, except for my my glaring mistake about not taping off. That part and that part. So I'll just strip. I'll just go along here. Probably won't worry about down there. I can fix that with just paint. But I don't think the drab, the olive drab is going to work over this real well. So I think I'll strip that. Hand paint, thin it out, paint it flat black. And then at least for this part, 
all of that should be the olive drab color. What a happy accident. <laughs> There's some guys just do really good stuff. I, I, I'm i pretty sure it's the. Do I have that right? Let me look it up real quick. Let me let me make sure I'm giving you. Correct. Information. Yeah, it's called, oh, sorry, no the. It's just called Model Car Muse, M-U-S-E. Pretty, pretty interesting, pretty cool stuff, I think at least. All right, thanks, Timson. In fact, I think I'm about ready to wrap this up as well. I think I've kind of hit a point where... I'll do some stuff off air if I have a chance. One of the last kits I made as a teen was a huge Lancaster bomber diorama. The plane was getting serviced on the concrete with a bit of... Ooh, you don't still have that, though, do you? Because that would be cool to see. That would be neat. I like it all. I like planes. I like the plane stuff, military stuff, ships, boats, Gundam figures. The Civil War stuff is really interesting. I don't really want to do any of that stuff, but I really like. What? Uh, how do I say this? I really like looking at it. I just don't want to do it myself. Just like my dad does all just does rod and custom stuff. Top stretch, just all kinds of crazy stuff. I don't have a huge desire to do that, but I love looking at it. You gave it to a war veteran. Oh, well, that, there you go. Then I'm sure it's still alive and kicking. Possibly the wrong choice of words. I meant the model. Ah, Star Fox found him. All right, good. Well, thanks for hanging out. I think we're going to, I've got some stuff drying here. I'm going to figure out how to fix some of my other errors. <laughs> but um, psh. that was, that was an unintended faux pas. I guess the definition of faux pas is unintended. Anyway, I've got some stuff to go over, fix a few things. We'll see if I get to a spot where I can stream tomorrow. Like I said, I'm probably going to do a video maybe once a week or so that kind of just recaps what I've done. And then when you get to the second video, it'll be whatever I've done since the first video. That way, people can kind of catch up if they miss part of the live stream and they don't want to go back or whatever. But I appreciate you guys hanging out. It's been fun as always. And, uh, yeah, there's not much left I got, so we will we'll go here. And, yeah, take care, everybody. Thanks so much for hanging out. And uh, we'll just keep plugging along. Like, we're making pretty good progress. I'm, I'm scared when I get to the body, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go eat some discount Easter chocolate. I don't think we even have any from yesterday. I had my almond roca, and that's that's about as far as we went. Anyway, take care, everybody. Uh, can always do the tagline. You've been great. I've been strange. Take care. I will see you in the next one. Bye.